Hi everyone, thanks for joining me. Um, today I'd like to tell you something about how you can add the sign in with Twitter functionality to your Crystal Web application. Uh, we'll uh, spend some time talking about why you should be interested in this and what this is about. We'll then uh, do a bit of a um, uh, kind of fulfill the, the precondition for this, which is uh, to have a Twitter app set up uh, in the Twitter developer portal. We'll then look at the integration uh, of the signing with Twitter functionality uh, with your Crystal backend. We'll pick a Kemal backend in this case, and then we'll uh, briefly touch on what a front end for this um, integration might look like and close with some references for you to go and uh, uh, deepen your understanding of some of these topics. Before we go, this is an overview of what we'll be building. We want to build a web page where the user can uh, click on the sign in with Twitter button and then they get redirected to Twitter where they can authorize our application to access their uh, credentials uh, and to access their user information. And finally, we want to get redirected to the some sort of authenticated information on our, on our domain. And we want to give the, the user the opportunity to log out of our application so that the cycle can uh, start again. Um, reasons why you might be interested in exploring this topic in this topic um, first of all uh, I'd say there are a few product or user experience related reasons you might be interested uh, in why you might be interested in this process uh, first of all uh, this is uh, logging in with a with a third-party application that is well known and uh, um, widespread like Twitter provides a frictionless sign up process for your users so they don't have to uh, think about generating yet another set of credentials for for your website it's also positive brand association because Twitter is well known and mostly respected uh, around uh, around the world uh, and also it allows you uh, it allows the user to not have to care for forgotten passwords and uh, and things like that which are as you well know, quite annoying to deal with from a user point of view. From a technical uh, point of view, the interesting thing about uh, integrating with a sign-in with a third-party um, application is the fact that user management is completely outsourced and uh, furthermore, so you won't have to uh, keep track of your uh, user credentials, you won't have to know about um, encryption of credentials or any, anything like that. And also you won't have to implement a forgotten password cycle or registration process and, and things like that. What is the catch with all of this? Well, session management is still on you, no matter how good um, this is, you will still have to um, manage and maintain and expire uh, application tokens where an application token is some sort of secret that your application understands that helps you understand who the user, um, who the user is. Finally, because uh, because we care about seeing how this is used in the wild, uh, if you want to see examples of the f this functionality being implemented by a website you might know, Gitter uh, is one of them, medium.com and Dev2 are also um, providing sign-in with Twitter functionality. You can see there are more sign-in with third-party uh, functionality that they provide, like GitHub um, or uh, Google. And the interesting bit is Twitter is slightly different in the way uh, the flow works, which is why I think it's, it's interesting that we focus on Twitter uh, alone. One of the preconditions before we, uh, before you uh, can start writing your, your integration is for you to go to your um, Twitter developer console and uh, create a, a Twitter app uh, so, that, um, so that you can actually um, uh, retrieve all the credentials the application will need to uh, implement the flow. It's as easy as going to developer.twitter.com slash en slash apps and then uh, clicking on the uh, create app button and then in uh, very quickly you'll be able to uh, define your own application. Things you care about when looking at the configuration of your app is the fact that the sign in with Twitter um, a flag should be enabled and also make sure that among the callback URLs, it, you include a local host one. This is because you want to be able to test the functionality locally. And so 
it's a good idea to have a local host uh, callback URL. We'll see what, what that is about in a second. Finally, if you navigate to keys and token, you can find your consumer API keys, in particular, your API key and API secret key. So to recap, there are three um, uh, pieces of settings that you care about when you set up your, your application. One is the callback URL, one is the API key, and finally the API secret key under your consumer API key. Okay, now that we are all set up, of course, you'd like to see the code, but before we do that, let's spend a minute uh, talking about what the authentication flow uh, looks like in terms of process. In a nutshell, um, um, Twitter implements what is called a three-legged OAuth 1.0a flow. And the gist of it is that our application will initiate an authentication flow with Twitter. The user will be redirected to Twitter and authorize our application to access their Twitter information, such as user ID. And finally, our application will be granted permission by Twitter uh, to act on behalf of the user. If we look at the entire flow, uh, the flow looks a bit like this, which uh, seems a bit too complicated. So let's break it down in smaller step. In the first, in the first instance, the user requests to sign in with Twitter and our application will issue what we call a request for a request token. As Twitter returns a request token to our application, we'll redirect the user to a Twitter authorization screen, which is under the Twitter, Twitter domain. The user will uh, enter their username and password if this is the first time they grant access uh, to um, our application. If not, they will just skip this step and uh, move to uh, step number three. And once the user has authorized our app to access their credential, Twitter will redirect the user to the callback URL that we saw in the first uh, in the definition of our of our Twitter app. As we receive um, the um, request from from Twitter, this will include a set of uh, um, a set of credentials that we can use to upgrade the request token into a so-called access token. This, and this is the third step of the three-legged auth um, uh, transaction. So there we go. Our application receives an access token. And with that access token, we can redirect the user to the authenticated content of our app. If you go and look at the details of the process, you will notice that there is um, a lot uh, around signing requests and making sure that all the uh, fields are uh, included in the signature and this can make the process somehow uh, cumbersome to be uh, to implement from scratch. We'll be relying on a, an open source crystal shard called Twitter Auth, which is something I've been working on a couple of years ago and managed to finally uh, publish uh, a few weeks ago. And what Twitter Auth is about is uh, it tries to make the entire um, three-legged Auth flow a bit easier by defining a very simple method to uh, request a request token uh, from the Twitter API, uh, redirect the user to the authenticate URL uh, on Twitter, and finally to upgrade the request token into an access one. But let's delve into the code. So this is the setup of our, uh, of our web application. We extract a bunch of parameters from the environment variables in particular we've seen all of them one is the consumer key one is the consumer key secret and finally in the callback url uh, we you might notice that i'm extracting the callback you, uh, path from the callback url to make the definition of the endpoint uh, generic to whatever environment we are using depending on if we're in the dev environment local environment or production environment and then uh, the, the fundamental step is to initialize an auth client uh, via the Twitter API constructor. As you can see, we're passing all the uh, credentials we just read, so the consumer key, the consumer secret, and the callback URL. There's also a couple of auxiliary data structures that we need to uh, define. We have to do that in order to do a bit of session management, as, because as I was mentioning, um, this is something that is still on uh, us to take care of. Uh, in this particular case, I'm defining two very simple data structure. The data structures users is just a hash that goes from a string, which is some representation of your applications tokens, 
to the Twitter API uh, credentials. And then I've got a, a collection of tokens um, under the tokens variable. Uh, that is something we'll have to uh, use to verify that any uh, authentication flow was indeed uh, initialized by our application. Now, these uh, two data structures serve the purpose for a basic example, and because we're interested in other aspects of the of the integration, but mind that ideally you would be using, uh, first of all, some thread safe data structures, and second of all, very likely some data structures that actually are backed by some sort of database, like for example, Redis, so that there can be multiple uh, instances of your application running and um, rely maybe behind the load balancer and relying on uh, the same view on which tokens and users uh, your application is uh, aware of. So the flow is going to be very simple. The user is going to be clicking on our sign in with Twitter button. At that point, the authenticate endpoint is going to be called on our web application. I'm using Kemal here, so I'm sure you'll be familiar with some of these. And my my rationale with this is whatever web framework or library you're using, uh, Kemal is uh, uh, straightforward and simple enough that it should be easy for you to port uh, these um, instructions to a different uh, to a different web framework. And uh, the first step is, as we were saying, to request a request token from the Twitter API, which is the step one of the three-legged auth flow. We then store the request token and add it to our uh, auxiliary data structure. We'll see why this is important in the next um, uh, endpoint. And finally, we redirect uh, the user to the authenticate URL under the Twitter domain. Uh, this is step two of the three-legged auth um, uh, 1.0a flow. At this point, the user will be presented with the an authorization screen on the Twitter uh, domain. They will understand very quickly that they're on the Twitter on a Twitter page, Twitter own page. They will fill in the details with their username and password, and finally they will sign in. Now at this point, Twitter will redirect the user to our callback URL that we specified in the configuration of our Twitter app. In the callback uh, in the callback path, we'll do a set of extraction from the um, from the URL the user will, was redirected to. In particular, we'll extract the auth token from the, uh, the query string um, parameters and we'll um, cut the uh, transaction short if the token has not been generated by, uh, by us or added to the tokens uh, set uh, by us in the previous uh, step. This is important because it verifies that our application was indeed the one starting the process. Once we verify that the token is indeed included uh, in our tokens data structure, we can take the token away from the from the set, and we can proceed to uh, extract one more um, one more parameter from the query string on the URL that Twitter um, that Twitter set. In particular, this is the auth verifier, and this is a very important piece of information because the token that we generated in the previous step plus the auth verifier generated by Twitter and returned over as a query string parameter uh, on the callback URL uh, allow us to upgrade the token into an access token. So we go from a request token to an access token. And this is how we can now act on behalf of the user when interacting with the Twitter, Twitter API. And in particular, we'll be able to um, verify the credentials of and the identity of the user uh, as is on Twitter. What we want to do now is we want to put some sort of abstraction between the token pair generated by Twitter and some sort of authentication uh, credentials that are valid only on our application. It's a good idea to do so. So what we'll do is we'll, in, part in this particular case, we'll generate a, UU, a random UUID and we'll uh, um, define this as an application token. So if the user wants to have an authenticated session with our app, they have to always provide this a secret, which is the app token. This allows us to do things like expiring the authentication token of our application without having to break the authorization uh, or expire the authorization that the user gave to Twitter uh, to let us access their credentials. And this will be a bit clearer to you in the next few steps. 
finally and this is the last uh, the last step of the flow we redirect the user to our home screen or some sort of uh, page where they can visualize authenticated content mind the fact that i'm including the secret in the request url these uh, might look a bit weird to some but this is exactly what most applications will do around the world so uh, go and try to log in with your facebook credentials on on spotify and you'll notice that everything all the secrets all the possible secrets are actually passed in a callback url as you go through the um, authorization flow uh, to let uh, spotify access your your identity through uh, facebook or any other third party so this is sort of a, a, a well-established practice you might be including a jwt in the url you might also exploit the fact that maybe your your front end application is a single single page application so you don't really need to have a redirect at this point you could go directly from the callback url to some other url with a uh, which uh, exposes authenticated content without having to um, actually um, uh, render any sort of secret in the in the uh, address bar of your browser um, there are other techniques, but I'll let you uh, explore some of them uh, on your own. So what now? So the user has gone through this process and once they get redirected to your page, they will see some sort of loading screen. And thanks to some JavaScript magic, we can verify the user's credentials uh, and, uh, and fetch some information about them. In particular, we will extract the token. Uh, so in every interaction with the, with the backend, the front end will send the application token that we just generated so the uuid uh, that we call the app token and this information will be extracted resolved to the uh, twitter api um, credentials and once we have the twitter api uh, credentials which i'm calling twitter token here we can issue a request to uh, twitter through the auth client verify method passing the twitter token and this will return a set of information about the user and, and this is when we can start uh, showing authenticated content, content to the user, for example, their username or their um, the full name all other, or other uh, details like that. Finally, uh, we can let the user log out of our application. And at this point, it's our choice uh, to decide what we want to happen uh, when they log out. In particular, we will extract the application and Twitter token again, the app token from the application and the uh, from the from the request and Twitter token from our uh, database or uh, in-memory data structure. Once we have the two of them, we we have two options. We can either keep the Twitter token as they are, so we'll still know about this user in our backend, but uh, uh, log them out of our application by destroying the app token, or we can take a more radical approach where we actually invalidate the Twitter token. This means that next time. The user wants to access our application they will have to go through the authorization step on the twitter page again which might be a bit annoying but I'll, i just decided to include this for for completeness finally we can redirect the user to the home screen and, and at this point they're not authenticated anymore so they're going to be seeing the sign in with twitter button again this is it for the backend integration uh, before uh, i leave you i just wanted to quickly go through what a front-end integration could look like I defined a very simple Vue.js uh, web application uh, that uh, can be in uh, one of three states. The application can be not loaded, loaded and not logged in, or loaded and logged in. And depending on the state of the app, the user will see different content. Uh, the HTML for this application is super simple. And in particular, the part that is the most relevant is the one where we look at uh, what happens after the application has loaded where depending on whether the user is logged in or not they will see some authenticated uh, uh, information or just the uh, login with twitter button now the javascript part of the application is slightly more interesting we're defining a uh, view application as you uh, always do and we're defining a state that is defined by loaded logged in and a username um, variables We'll use loaded and logged in to understand which one of the three states we are in and we'll use yours we'll set username to something that is not null whenever the user is actually logged into the application and on the uh, you can you can look at the full code 
uh, by following the links on the in the reference page but just to focus on the on the relevant bits here when the component of your application uh, will of your view application will mount or before the component mounts we'll just check if the uh, credential the application credentials are included in the url um, uh, query string parameters if they are then so if they're not then things are simple the applicant the user is not logged in we'll just set loaded to true and logged in to false and the user will just uh, be this, be shown the uh, sign in with twitter button otherwise what we do is we we have just extracted the application token from the uh, from the query string uh, parameter so we can now uh, pack the token in the headers in some shape or form i'm doing it in a very naive way here and then send a request to a backend an authenticated uh, endpoint in the backend in particular i'm hitting the verify an endpoint which will just work as a proxy for a verification uh, endpoint on the twitter api once we reach, we retrieve the data back we can mark the user as logged in, extract the username from the payload of um, the uh, uh, JSON body that is returned by our API in this particular case and set the loaded um, variable as true. And this is when the user will actually be, sorry, this is where the user will actually be displayed with uh, information, the authenticated information about, about themselves. So to summarize, we have a JavaScript, bit of JavaScript to handle the information coming from the backend, the authenticated information, a bit of HTML that uh, is um, shown whenever the application in, is in the loaded and logged in state. And these uh, all together uh, results in the user visualizing some authenticated uh, content. This is, this is really it. Of course, you can imagine after the then on the JavaScript code, we might want some, some catch to verify the, uh, to, to cater for the situation where the user has a token, but the token is not a valid one. I just decided to trim the code to keep things simple here, but you'll find a more complete um, uh, listing of the code on the, in, in a repository mentioned in the reference, in the references, which is exactly where we are um, uh, now. So, Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed uh, this brief um, tutorial on how to integrate the login with Twitter functionality to your into your uh, Crystal application. There's all the code that has been shown plus a bit more and a demo on Heroku that you can find by following these links. There's also, I also left you a link to the Twitter's, to Twitter's official guide to the login with Twitter functionality and to the three-legged auth um, flow. And finally, a link to the Crystal shard that I've been uh, working on and that I was that I used to actually write this example and make the the code so succinct. Thanks for watching.